Lord, and speak to you with confidence now. Boldly approach your throne. Almighty, infinite, awesome God, who loves me, calls me his own. How could it be that you'd give your unfailing love and pour out your grace so free? How could it be that you'd rescue me out of my sin and give your own son for me? So all that the world could see, grace, grace that is greater, greater than all my sin. How could we comprehend that you never will turn away from the sinner you came to save? I love the old grace. Without the cross, there'd be no hope at all. Far from God, we would be. But through his blood is redemption and power To save us and set us free So how could it be that you give the unfailing love Pour out your grace so free And how could it be that you rescue me out of my sin And give your own son for me So all that the world could Almost Happy New Year. Good to see our scouts here. Are you awake, scouts? <laughs> oh, good. So good to see you all. Okay, just a few announcements. Um, remember that the church office will be closed uh, on Monday, January 1st. Uh, today's altar flowers are in memory of Gerald and Georgia Dix and given by their children grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Also, remember, uh, Tuesday prayer hour is 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. in the sanctuary. Trustees, you have a meeting Thursday, January 4th at 5.30 in the chapel. Also, um, if you've purchased the poinsettia and you haven't picked it up yet, remember to take it home with you today. And uh, newsletters have been delivered to your church mailbox, so pick them up today. <coughs> So, will you please join me in the call to worship? <laughs> Praise the Lord, all the earth, from the highest heights to the deepest depths. Praise the Lord, all the heavens and starry host. All throughout the universe, may praise to God. Come, let us joyfully praise God.
children please come forward. So, tonight's a big night. Come on down, Joel. You want to come? No, maybe not. Big night, right? What happens tomorrow? Of 2024. Starts a brand new year, right? Yeah. Big celebration. Yeah. You're going to party hardy, right? You're going to stay up till midnight? Really? I might make it to 9.30. <laughs> Don't call me just in case. <laughs> well, in Big People's Church today, they're going to talk about God's grace. So I wanted to read you just a little bit of scripture. As soon as I find it. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. Do you guys know anybody that's been adopted? Your friend Grace? She's special, you know why? Because her parents chose her. They picked her out and they chose her. And you know who else picked us out? I mean, we're all adopted, you know that? We're all adopted. Amen. You know who picked us out? Who, Jonathan? God picked us out. He chose us. He picked us out. And now we're children of God. Isn't that just a wonderful thing? Yeah. Isn't that a great way to start 2024? Knowing that you have been adopted by none other than God. I think that's pretty fabulous. Don't you? And we're all brothers and sisters. That's right. Because we got adopted by the same, the same father, the same holy father. I think that's cool. Don't you think that's cool? All right. Well, this year, remember that you were loved by a very special father that picked you out special to be his child. Can you remember that? All right. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, 2023 is ending. 2024 is just beginning. We have all kinds of opportunities. The biggest opportunity that we have is to walk every day with you. We want to thank you for adopting, for choosing us and adopting us into your family. We feel special because of that. Help us to be worthy children of you. Keep us today and all of 2024 close to you. In your name we pray. Amen. you to share the joys and concerns you have and after that we'll pray together so please share your share your joys and concern this time all right i would just like to say i'm just thankful for, for just everyday blessings mm. amen amen thank you for sharing that pastor yes I just want to thank God for his sweet spirit here today. I could really feel it during the worship time. Mm -hmm. And I'm thankful that we can come to a church surrounded by people that pray for us and love us and love Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for the Holy Spirit's yes. presence. Amen. Thank you. Anyone else want to share joys and concerns? If so, uh, let's take a moment to pray about what we have heard today and also we have our own personal prayers for next year and this year and all of our days. So let's pray together.
John Wesley's prayer, I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me to what thou wilt. Rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed by thee, or laid aside for thee, exalted for thee, or brought love for thee. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Thou art mine, and I am Thine. So be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. O Lord, we need Your grace upon grace. Please be with us. This time. We shared our joys and concerns, so please grant your healing to those who are sick. Give peace to those who have broken hearts. Give us courage to serve you sincerely. Here's the word of assurance. The ancient promises of God are fulfilled. God does not forget us. God's mercy extends from generation to generation. Let our souls rejoice in God. Amen. And now we pray the prayer the Lord Jesus Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It's time to respond to God's grace in our lives and support the ministry of this church with our gift. The ushers, please come forward. Collect the offering. And while we're doing that, we're going to sing Amazing Grace, and it'll be on the screen.
have blessed us as well with the gift of your Son and indeed with the gift of life itself. Out of all these blessings, we give you back these offerings this day, knowing that your promises will be fulfilled. We pledge our lives to you in anticipation of the coming of the one who brings us peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Our scripture today is from John 1, verses 10 through 18. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, 
who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried, this was he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is the only son himself, God, who is close to the father's heart, who has made him known. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please be seated. The children are dismissed for the children's church. Morning. Good morning. Let's greet each other with this word. May peace be with you. May peace be with you. May peace be with you. Today is the last day of 2023. How was your year? Was it hard? Was it painful? Or was it happy and grateful? But through it all, God was with us Amen. in 2023. Not only was He with us, but He poured out grace on us every moment. It was grace up and grace and grace. As I reflect on my 23, I'm grateful to God. I'm thankful that my family is doing well and healthy. And I, I was able to live a faithful life with my beloved church family. Especially when we open Christmas card and gift, I realized how much love we are receiving. So I'm so grateful for the love you have sent us. We appreciate it. Today, through the scripture, I want to share with you what we should leave behind in 2023 and what we should take in 24. Let's read the first part of John chapter 1, verses 10 to 12 together. Let's read together. He was in the world. And the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God. Amen. First, what we need to leave behind in 23 is forgetting and not knowing Jesus. Jesus came to this earth, God in heaven incarnated in a human body. There was only one reason for this. He loved us so much. He came himself to save us out. But how did the word respond? How were we? Although the word was created through God, but it did not know him. His own people, what did they do? They did not accept their king. The Pharisees and Jewish religious leaders rejected and persecuted Jesus. They did not recognize him. No, actually they recognized him, but they did not accept him because they did not want to surrender the throne of their life. They want to be king in their lives. We need to hear this too. Jesus came into our lives. And if we do not know him, how tragic would that be? If the king has come, but his people do not accept him, no Lord, later, how sorrowful would that be? 
Who is the king of your heart? Who is the master of your life? We, we always confess that Jesus is our king. But at times, in the moments of our lives, we forget him and live according to our desires. We make a decision that do not please him and stray away like the prodigal son. Though we may seem to always be by the father's side like the eldest son, but our hearts may be distant at times like him. There are times when we stay away from reading the Bible or praying. So let's lay down all these things that broke the heart of Jesus and move forward. In 24, let's desire to know Jesus more and strive to follow his will even more. Amen? Amen. The Lord will help us. Yes. Now let's read together verse 14. Verse 14. Let's read together. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen His glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. Amen. Secondly, what we need to hold on to in 2 and 4 is the Word of God. The Word of God. Let's read the Bible. Let's set aside time in our day to read the Bible. When we read the Bible, we encounter Jesus. What does verse 14 say today? It says, the Word became flesh. The Gospel of John emphasizes logos, which means the word in Greek. That is word. Logos is word. The Gospel of Mark begins with the beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, that proclaiming Jesus as the Son of God. The Gospel of Matthew starts with the genealogy of Jesus. Emphasizing that Jesus is a descendant of Abraham and David, revealing each Jewish context. The Gospel of Luke traces the gene genealogy of Jesus all the way back to Adam, narrating God's plan of salvation for all humanity. How does the Gospel of John begin? Verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John's Gospel begins by praising Jesus as the Logos, the Word, who was before the creation of the Word. When we read the Word, it is reading Jesus. If we send the word as text message to someone, we are sending Jesus. If we speak the Bible verse to comfort someone, it is Jesus comforting. The Bible is not a history book of past events. It is a living book. Amen. Jesus is not just a historical figure from 2,000 years ago. He is arrived in our lives now because the Word is Jesus. Therefore, the Word of God has power. If it were just a past history, if we're reading it a hundred or a thousand times, but it would not bring about change because this is just history, the past story. But because it is a truly a living word, when we read it, we come to believe in Jesus. And our lives are transformed. Amen. That is the evidence. This is a lot. 
We experience the living proof of the Bible multiple times. You are the living evidence. You are the living proof. And let's imagine several people reading the same Bible, same page, same verses. If asked to find touching verses for you or touching uh, words, each person would point to different parts. I think this verse sounds like God is speaking directly to me. And some other people, I love this part. I experienced this yesterday. Because our life conditions differ. God speaks the needed words at the right time. And also, even if one person read the same passage, the grace received a year ago and a year later can be different. This is the evidence that the Holy Spirit is actively working through the Bible in our lives. He's arrived. So my beloved, let us read the Bible. Let us read Jesus Christ. The living words of Jesus will become a great power in our lives. Yes, we often face failures. I also often fa face failures. There are times I decide to read the Bible. I, 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 I have to read the Bible and do well for a while and then fail and forgot some days. But we can always start again. Try and try again. So, in 2024, let's make this Bible our close friends. Like this. <laughs> let's hold Bible's hands. The Word of God is right. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now let's read the, the last verses, 16 and 17. 16 and 17. Let's read together. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Amen. In verse 12 it is written, But to all who believed in his name he gave power to become children of God. You are children of God. Amen? Amen? And also verse 16 says, From His fullness we have all received grace upon grace. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. My beloved friends, we are children of God. To God's children, grace upon grace always abounds. The greatest grace is the grace of salvation. And through that grace, our lives are transformed every day, every time, every minute. Through that grace, we become better and better Christians. Because of that grace, we are changing. The enemy, the devil, tries to trip us up. He tries to attack us. He tries to curse us and condemn us. You're not eligible for the church. You're a sin. You're a sinner. But Jesus will defeat the enemy. He will cover us with his precious blood. Grace upon grace. He will cover us. Satan comes and tries to remove that the covering of grace. I don't need one. You don't need this one. Satan, cover, remove that cover, that blanket of grace. But in the end, ultimately, he cannot remove it. Why? Because when he uncovers the grace, he finds more grace with it. And more grace. And more grace. And more grace. It is grace up in grace. So Satan cannot remove it at all. That is the love of God. That is the cross. 
One day someone had a dream. In the dream he found himself in a warehouse filled with files, much like a library. When he got closer and looked at them, he realized that the files were detailed record of his life. So the file names were diverse, such as friends I betrayed, books I read, lies I told, people, people I comforted, situations where I yelled at children, people I hated, and many more. Each file was self-recorded and each had its own signature. Also, there was also filed, labeled, people I evangelized. But he was so thin, he was ashamed. As he continued to look, he saw a file called, Times I Had Simple Thoughts. When he looked at it, he saw the shameful details in his, of his life. So he said to himself, no one should ever see these files. I must get rid of this. So he tried to get rid of the fire or destroy that, but it was so powerful that no matter how hard he tried, it would not tear or burn. He quickly put it back where it belonged and leaned against the wall and weeping. Just then, someone appeared. It was Jesus. He immediately opened the files and began to read. Jesus' face showed deep sorrow. So he shouted, Lord, don't just read the bad record about me. Read other good records, please. But after a while, Jesus turned around. Look at him with eyes full of compassion and approached. And Jesus hugged him. Later, Jesus began to sign each file one by one with Jesus' name over his signature. He cried out, No, Lord, how can you sign your precious name on my shameful record? So Jesus continued to write his signature, it was vividly marked in red. After finishing the signing, Jesus said, It's over now. It is finished. No one can judge you anymore. Overwhelmed with gratitude, he rushed into the arms of the Lord, but woke up from the dream. That dream left such an uh, impression that he always lived remembering the grace of the cross. And later, he became a pastor. Grace, open grace. Grace is the blood of Christ that covers our sins. And it is the warm blanket that covers someone who's sitting alone and crying in a cold winter. In Indiana, usually there are many snowy days in winter. Is it right? Mm -hmm. Yes, we have many snow. Imagine the snow falling, the beautiful white snow. The snow covers everything. Snow covers the house of a kind person. That good person gets covered in white. And also some houses where a bad person lives are covered in white snow. The snow falls on this house and that house, this church, that church, that person's house, this person's house, equally. Snow falls without discrimination. In our lives, there are days when we love God a lot and some days when we sin. But we have, we have to remember, all of those days, God's grace 
or zonas sincerely, equally, just like snow. That's why we call it grace, open grace. So my beloved brothers and sisters, I pray that God's grace will fall like snow on your life in, th in 2024. Just like snow up in snow, I believe that grace up in grace will pile up in your life. Verse 16, from His fullness we have all received grace up in grace. Lord, have mercy on us. Amen. Let's take a moment for prayer and meditate on the God's voice. Let's pray. to see in the closing hymn. So please rise and praise our Lord together. While Pastor Zhang Min was preaching, I thought about a friend who I said before, she deserves to have this, she deserves to have that. Um, it may be, I deserve to have a new house, I deserve to have a new car, I deserve to have a vacation. And I was thinking, if we got what we deserve, we'd be on a one-way trip to hell. But because of God's grace, we don't get what we deserve, we get what we don't deserve. And we're going to sing about that.
first in peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.